Hello there. I'm about to rendezvous. We're going to pick up the Italiano. Happy May the 4th be with you in this all Star Wars episode of OG 55. Let's go get the Italiano right now. Welcome aboard, everybody, to this all Star Wars episode of OG 55. I picked up the Italiano. He is officially on board. George, welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you very much. I'm uh, I'm just so glad that when you decided to beam me up into the, the Falcon that I wasn't on the toilet. So I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, right. Be beam you up like Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, sorry, wrong franchise. Whoopsies, whoopsies. <laughs> and, and, and I do ha I do have another person with us today, or another another friend of ours with with uh, OG55. Yeah, so he says hi, too. But, uh, George, if you can let everybody home know where they can find you on social media, sir. Absolutely. You can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Disney George. You could also find me on Instagram under the Disney Italiano. And, of course, you'll find me here on my home base at Orange Grove 55 with Citrus Corner with all that sweet, juicy, but sometimes sticky Disney news and info. There it is. There it is. All right, let's talk some Star Wars today. Um, now, you just got back from California, right? You mm -hmm. spent... Well, I want like two weeks here, I think, right? Just about a little under two weeks. Yeah, it was awesome. Okay. Yeah, very, very cool. Now, one of those nights you had, you did Star Wars night over at Disneyland. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up some pictures, but um, kind of walk us through your experience. I've never actually done this before. So I'm very curious as to what, what this entails. Absolutely. So yes, uh, Star Wars night is one of the uh, specialty Disneyland after dark uh, events that they, uh, that they usually hold, you know, each year. I know they had Star Wars night before, and I believe with the popularity, they decided to bring it back. They may or may, they may or may not have added new stuff from the last time, because this was actually my first time doing Star Wars night. And, um, you know, our, uh, very good friend and collaborator of, on the channel, Mr. Michael Webba also had, uh, done Star Wars night, which, um, you know, he, you know, it's really not, too much of his thing you know so i was kind of going it blindly to see how i would think about it and um honestly from my experience i don't know what the fuck he's talking about because i actually enjoyed it <laughs> Did you? okay yeah well that's interesting because yeah initially you weren't impressed right like you texted me early in the evening you're like i, was I don't know worried. yeah i was worried because um I, I was starting to feel like, oh my gosh, like, what is this? Like, it felt like the park was completely dead, but not in a good way where it was like, it was empty, where it was like, okay, we can get on rides. It just didn't feel Star Wars to me. And every few feet, uh, it was like, you know, oh, show your wristband, you know, and it's like, because I guess it was more so to the fact of trying to get everybody out that really shouldn't have been there. <laughs> and right. it took like about a whole hour for them to kind of like weave out everyone who wasn't part of the uh the event and uh so the 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 actual star wars night kicked off around 9 p.m uh okay. that's when they started playing the john williams music the lights came on and all the festivities kind of started and then i started kind of feeling like okay now this is really starting to feel like into the, the the star wars mode yeah because i remember texting you i was like i was ready to bounce like i was there for like 45 minutes and i thought man this is like this was like a complete waste so in the early in the early time when you were ready to bounce was there any lighting packages or anything to show you that it was star wars night or was just kind of just okay so it was basically for that port the 45 minutes was probably just kind of getting everybody in and getting the people that weren't involved out so that's probably yeah. why it was you weren't really feeling it. Yeah, because I was walking around uh, Frontierland, and they were still playing the the Frontierland music in the background. And I thought, okay, I'm not really getting no Star Wars vibes. Like, what is this? Right. And um, but luckily, it did deliver around 9 p.m. is when all the uh, the the lighting, the music, the festivities started. Okay, okay. So it's so the lighting packages, the music started. Now you're feeling it. 
now the energy is there. So what was your first thing that you that you started to do? Once so the first so the first thing, and I started looking onto the um the little uh, they give you like a little event kind of map and uh, menu. Um, it kind of tells you where the character meet and greets are going to be located, the specialty foods and and beverages. And uh, so I decided that for me, and I think this is where it, it didn't really seem like it was a benefit for Mike because he's really not a, um, a meet and greet character kind of person is what he told me. So I, you know, it's, it's, you know, to one's own, you know, of what you like and everything. So, um, but for me, I thought, you know what, these are characters that I don't really get to see on a regular basis. So I kind of took that, that almost that hour to kind of plan out of what I wanted to do. So I kind of had a game plan. I knew I wanted to meet the Jawas. I knew I wanted to meet the Ewoks. Um, I wanted to see the emperor. Oh yeah. Um, I wanted you, to see Darth Maul. You got to see Palps, man. You got to see Palps. Got to see Palps. And uh so my first stop actually was in Adventureland to meet the Jaw was. And that for me was one of the best uh character meet and greets and interaction that I think I've ever had at a Disney park. Really? Well, yeah. now, why was it, why was that? What did they do that made it so so unique, so stand out for you? So for me, first off, the, the queue line um, to actually meet them, the cast members were phenomenal. They gave uh, guests enough time to interact with them, but yet it was only a 15, 20 minute wait. It, you know, they were they were getting people in and out. They were not wasting time. Um, so for the job was they um, were very hands on. Um, they were actually uh, searching my pockets. They were kind of. It sounds a little too handsy, George. I don't know. Yeah, yeah they're going in, like, they going in my pockets and everything, trying to find like to see if I had any uh, items that they like. And the one that I'm actually standing next to uh, ended up grabbing my lanyard and badge and was like looking at it and held it up to the other one and the it sh it shook its head and it just threw it back down like what what are we going what are we going to do with that that's not valuable to us <laughs> that's awesome that is awesome and, and this is cool this is the kind of stuff that we should be seeing more of in galaxy's edge and the thing is is i think these these after hours upcharge events are kind of the gift and the curse in a lot of ways because they're awesome because it's a controlled experience where you can have just you can go full fully immerse like you you can fully immerse yourself in the Star Wars thing right because it's an after hours thing and they can turn the whole park into Star Wars. The downside to it though is that it de incentivizes Disney to have these characters in the land all year because. Mm -hmm. They want you to pay the extra to see these Jawas. They don't want you getting that shit for free all year long. So it de-incentivizes it, which is sad because I do think the land needs more characters, more energy like that, right? We've talked all about it a lot on the channel. So it's a gift for the after hour thing. It's a curse for the normal yeah. operations throughout the year, which is sad. Hopefully they can find a good balance though. I mean, I do see improvements with the Galaxy's Edge with the like, cute little droids that walk around now, things like that. I've seen R2 many times. Um, but they still have work to do, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And and you're right. It is. It, it's a blessing and a curse at the same time. Because for me, you know, it was, you know, a different experience. And that's where it felt like the upcharge was worth it, in a sense, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, but at the same time, Disney wants that extra dough. So it's like they're not just going to throw them into the parks on a regular basis, because if you then put them into a special event, people aren't going to pay the extra money to say, Oh, we, well, I could just meet the jaw was with my regular park ticket or my magic key. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And then from what I understand, I see, I, we have a bunch of pictures here. Um, there is that you, you also met, this is really actually very cool. Our friend Kaylee's going to love this. An Ewok. Yes. I I waited actually about an hour and a half uh, to meet the Ewok. Um, that's this was over uh, by uh, Critter Country. Okay, and uh, they were kind of. It started out very slow, and I think I didn't really have too much of an interaction with the Ewok. But I think it was because the line was so big that they really wanted to try to just get as much people in to meet the Ewok as possible. I feel like at the very beginning there was a lot of interaction, but that's what was like backing the line up 
for like a, for like almost two hours. Oh my gosh! But it was still worth it. He was he was very cute. You know, he still was like in his you know Ewok mode and everything. But uh, it it was a a little bit of a lesser um interaction than uh than the uh, the jaw was. And it was because you think it was because it was slowing down that line. It was getting kind of yeah. out of hand. Yeah, that, that's absolutely. weird. Now, now, did you? Now, I see that you have a picture with the Ewok with the Jawas. What other characters were you able to meet at this at this event? So, uh, other characters were I didn't actually um, physically like meet that they had like uh, Queen Amidala, they had uh, Chewbacca, uh, C three PO. I didn't get a chance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, uh, I, I didn't get a chance to actually uh, meet them, unfortunately. But there were character sightings um, that I uh, got to experience because I went over to Tomorrowland and they had um, Darth Vader, Darth Maul, and the Stormtroopers over by the Galactic Grill. And they kind of did like this little kind of like montage posing kind of kind of thing where they just stood on the stage and they would do it very climactic. Like they raised the stage while they were standing there and everything. And then they created a line where you can pass them and kind of take a selfie, um, which I didn't do that because I just felt like it was a waste of time to just stand in a line just to, you know, take a, a crappy selfie that I'm not really good at taking. So I just kind of stood back and just took my own individual photos of them for which I met the stormtroopers and Vader um, many times. I was a little bit disappointed that Darth Maul wasn't actually doing like a physical meet and greet. That would have been really cool. Now I want to ask you something. Cause there's a lot of, a lot of criticism with Disney and galaxy's edge. It's too sequel trilogy heavy, right? I mean, the whole land is sequel trilogy, basically, except for like a few things here and there. We, we, we you can meet Boba Fett now. You can meet um, Fennec and uh, you know Mando and Grogu. You know what I'm saying? But for the most part, this is a, it's a very sequel trilogy based land. Did you notice a difference? Because I see from basically from the pictures that you're showing here, it seems way more original trilogy based for Star Wars Night. Was that pretty much the case all the way through it, or was there still like a lot of Kylo Ren and Rey and stuff like that? Uh, Ray was present. She was doing a, uh, like a lightsaber ceremony over at galaxy's edge. Okay. Um, Kylo, I don't believe he was present at the, at the event from what I've understand, but it was a lot more driven with the prequels and the originals. Um, however, I did find it interesting speaking of with, um, Vader and Darth Maul meeting at the galactic grill that they put two characters together that are in different timelines, you know, in a sense where, I mean, I know you, one can argue where it's like, okay, well, Darth Maul really didn't die in episode one. So it can kind of overlap with Vader, you know, after Anakin became Vader. But if you just look at as the, the, um, the film perspective of episode one to episode four, you know, Darth Maul and Vader really don't go together, you know? So I, I do think it was kind of cool that they kind of, made that a little bit laxed to what galaxy's right. edge doesn't do what they used to do even with star wars weekends down at walt disney world yeah star wars weekends was i mean i never went i never experienced it personally right so my 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 perceptions of it are very limited it's based on what i've seen on like online and like youtube and things like that there was a lot of things in star wars weekends that were awesome right and then there was a lot of things that i think went a little too far with the joking like I don't need to see a twerking Boba Fett. Um, that's, you know what I'm saying? Or, or a moonwalking Darth Vader. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, I like that. I like, I, I want these events, these Star Wars things to have fun. You know, like like Avengers Campus does with with Marvel, right? But I think you can cross a line where you become almost like a parody and it almost becomes like an SN, like an, almost like an SNL skit or something. Yeah. And weekends felt like that sometimes. Right. So I don't want, I don't want Disney to go that direction anymore, like totally in that direction, but I do think they can loosen up and have a little more fun than they currently have in galaxy's edge for sure. You know, absolutely. And then of course I had a way to, to, to be in the presence of Emperor Palpatine, you know? Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. Everything is proceeding as I have foreseen. <laughs>
Hey, dude, I'm telling you, Palpatine is one of my favorite characters in Star Wars. I, I would love to see, and this is a super unpopular opinion, okay? This is not going to go over well, but I, I stand by it. I would love to see a Palpatine float in Paint the Night. I'm telling you, there's a big old Palpatine with the lightning coming out. I mean, dope parade for a dope parade float. I know Disney fans would, would absolutely hate that. I understand that. I just that's a thing I would love to see. That's a personal OG thing, but love the character. Now he he was standing up here. This is a launch bay, right? With he was up at the cars. top at the launch bay. Yes, and they also utilized that for um, the Captain Phasma march, uh, the First Order march, where they actually. Uh, started like at the the bottom and they moved up into the the upper part of the launch bay and then came back down um so they utilized a lot of the land um to kind of incorporate the characters to kind of use you know use it in a in a way that was very creative um so i actually enjoyed that but yeah i never got to see uh palpatine in the parks at all so even though he wasn't doing a meet and greet i think that would have been kind of cool just like with darth maul but just the fact that i was able to see him in a Disney park, I thought was very cool. A lot of people were yelling up to him saying, you know, we love you, uh, Sidious, you know, you're the, you're the guy. And he was just like, he did not break character. He was just staring people down like nobody's business. That's fantastic. No, that's absolutely fantastic. So the music throughout the whole park, was it all Star Wars I, or what, did they mix it up? Like, because the Tomorrowland Terrace does a lot of dance party stuff. Was there anything yeah. that kind of broke away from? Because I know Pixar Fest, when we went to Pixar Fest to go meet the, the Luca guys, they were playing like songs from Barbie and other, you know. Yeah. Troll. Did they do that kind of shit in this thing? They did. <laughs> yeah, they did. Um, uh, it, out of Main Street, they had like a DJ where they were playing um, different like remixes and songs that didn't really have anything to do with with star wars but i mean the kids were having a ball and even adults the cast uh, the cast members that was like the best thing to actually see a bunch of cast members just holding their lightsabers and they're just dancing along to the music and everything it was like one big star wars block party um so that's where it kind of separated itself but i felt like it wasn't where it was overpowering because they only had that section on main street um where there wasn't really too much going on as far as um like the actual star wars lore but on main street they also had like the costume parade for any uh guests that participated that were dressed in uh star wars costume so i felt like main street was more like of that um star wars but kind of off star wars kind of thing where it wasn't really in depth with the like the storyline of okay. the films okay now how was okay so now with these events usually they have a bunch of food offerings mm -hmm. and i do see I, i'll pull up a picture here you got this thing what is this yes. George? okay so that is called the dagobah uh swamp water and it's uh it, it's a non-alcoholic um uh beverage but it was actually very refreshing What's the fun in that, man? I a non alcoholic? I know. <laughs> it was a long night. Che uh, che Chewy wouldn't approve, man. Chewy wouldn't approve. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm just playing with you. So yeah, it was it was non alcoholic. Yeah, it was non alcoholic. Um, it was not overly sweet, but it was it was yeah, it was very refreshing. Um, it kind of had like a um. I don't know what you would kind of like, like a, like a, like a watermelon kiwi kind of flavor to it. To me, that's what it kind of tasted like. And they have like a gummy frog, um, put on, on top as like the, the garnish. Cause it's supposed to be uh swamp water from, from the Dagobah system. That's interesting. Yeah. It, it doesn't, it doesn't I mean, it's, it, like, it's all psychological with this stuff, you know, but yeah. it doesn't look because it's green and it's kind of like, eh, you know, but it was pretty good though. Surprisingly, yeah. it was pretty yeah, good. It was really okay. Good. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. And then now I do see that you tried here to get to that picture. Give me one second. Y'all this, what is this? Okay. So that now this photo kind of came, uh, I get, I think it was the lighting. So the, the photo didn't really come out to the best quality like everything else but this is the 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 uh the braca sub and i have to say it, it actually doesn't look that appetizing but it was actually so good i actually got two 
Okay, what? Because it looks like from the picture, I know it, the picture's a little fuzzy. It looks like a Philly cheesesteak or something. Is that what it was or what was in here? Yeah, it had, uh, it, it was like on a, um, I'm trying to think of the type of bread that it was on. It was like a, not a brie, not brioche, but it was like on a top of, uh, yeah, I forget the, the the bread, but yeah, they had uh, onions in it. It had, um, yeah, it was sort of like a, like an off, not like a Philly cheesesteak because I don't. They didn't use beef. I think it was, um, I think it was chicken, if if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Um, but it had like onions and and different and different stuff. I uh, I believe mushrooms as well. It I was had, really good. Yeah, there's actually a place here. I don't know if you guys have it in, 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 in PA, but in California, we have a place called Charlie's subs okay. and they have one actually at my local mall. And I used to get a sand, a sandwich, a sub actually very similar to this over there where they would, they would chop up uh chicken and they would put like onions, like you said, like mushrooms and they'd have like a sauce on there, things like that. Maybe even like bell peppers. Kind of reminds me of that. It, I mean, it sounds good, dude. It sounds actually really good. It was really good. As I said, I ate one and I'm like, and now this is during the time where I was like giving up hope. This was like in the very beginning of the night. Oh, come on, man. This is Star Wars. You can't give up hope, George. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, that I was sitting there and I had my sandwich trying to stall time to see what I wanted to do. And it was really good. And I thought, you know what? I'm just going to get a second one. And I thought after the second one, I'm probably just going to head out. So while I was eating the second sandwich, that's when every, like all the music came up and everything. Cause I was sitting over at uh, uh frontier land. Gotcha. 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 So, okay. So sandwich was good. The dog about frog drink was good. Mm -hmm. What did you go on any rides during this event or did you, was it mostly just kind of an atmosphere kind of chill walk around kind of thing? It was more of an atmosphere chill, just kind of get a, a, a lay of the land, so to speak, of how they really do these events. Because this was my first time. I mean, I've done Oogie Boogie Bash um, many times, but this is like my first um, like after dark event uh at Disneyland. So I, I really wanted to see, I, I already know like how the rides are, you know? So it's like, if you wanted to do that and utilize your time, you know, to be in the park where the lines aren't that long, you know, then, you know, definitely. But because I'm also there for the amount, the long length of time that I was there, it's like, I didn't feel the need that I needed to go on any rides because it felt like, well, I could just do that on a regular park day. You know, if I'm going to, pay the extra <laughs> premium i want to do stuff that's kind of out of the ordinary and it has to do with with star, star wars and this was your first time star wars doing star wars night correct and now, now would you do it again do you think it was worth the ticket price so i do oh. feel like the ticket price was a little bit over the amount um especially since they, they only give you a few hours in the event where you can't really get through everything so you just have to kind of pick a few things and try to get through as much as possible i still felt like i did a lot that was you know that i felt like i kind of got my money's worth but i do think that the ticket price is a little bit over the amount that they should really pay um given the fact that would i do it again i probably would do it again but i wouldn't go out of my way to do it every single time. Now that's just speaking for star Wars night. If there's another kind of event that's uh different in theme, like if they were to bring back that nineties night, <laughs> Oh, I'm so there. I would so do nineties night. Yeah. It depends on, yeah, exactly. It depends on what your fandom is too. Like you like star Wars, but from knowing you over the years, I don't think you like love, love it. Right. Y yeah. I'm not like a diehard, like star Wars, like into the lore kind of thing. Like I, I don't follow that stuff. Yeah, but you're but you do love the '90s stuff, yes. and that is something that you would be more drawn to, and with the '90s fireworks show and things like that. But as a Star Wars fan, like your son is very much into Star Wars. Is this something that he would like? You think, or I, I think he is definitely really into Star Wars. I, I don't think that he would really even care for this too much because, just like Mike, he's not really like a character meet and greet kind of person. Um, he would be more for the rides. So to pay for an upcharge ticket for him to just do rides, you know, it wouldn't be worth it. So I personally feel like that if you're for anybody, um, now I could only just speak to Star Wars because I don't know how any other event runs, but it's to me, if 
you're not a meet and greet type of person, if you're not really into different like types of food and beverages and what have you, um, and you're just, you, you know, you're really not, it, you, you know, the parade's nice, you know, the first order of March is cool. Um, they didn't have any Star Wars fireworks, and I think that's where a lot of people were getting like the, the bitter taste for Star Wars night, that it wasn't really that bad. I personally didn't really need fireworks for well, they, this but so they so when you say they didn't do it is it because of the wind and higher elevations or they just didn't have a show at all planned they for never it? they never really made the the reason i do think it was because if there would be a possibility of the wind and there was a night where they couldn't do the fireworks that they would fear that fans would then try to go for refunds because oh well this night you had fireworks but tonight for me you didn't so i think that they just kind of just removed it all together so there wouldn't be no hard feelings one way or the other if you were happened to be during the event with fireworks as the opposite of not having them now one of the days that you were here in california you had the opportunity to see the galaxy's edge fireworks mm -hmm. fire of the i always forget the name uh, uh yeah something with moon fire I, the rising fire, moon something moon. like yeah, that yeah it. yeah but but that's not really like a show it's kind of weird with that one right so it's like they it's actually viewing the regular fireworks from galaxy's edge correct but in galaxy's edge they pipe in star wars music John, correct right yeah. so it wasn't created like as a star wars show it's just sort of like utilizing the existing fireworks show and kind of crafting the music around it now that you had the uh, you you were with theme park casual yes our was, friend theme yes. park casual and you guys checked that out and um it seems like you guys liked it what, what, but over like yeah uh, overall it was really good i think of how they utilized the the fireworks to kind of create something from scratch to kind of put into galaxy's edge i think anything that they put into galaxy's edge moving forward is a plus is a bonus because galaxy's edge absolutely has nothing <laughs> to be honest so it's nice to see that they can kind of draw some of the crowds out yeah. from main street and get them into galaxy's edge um there were some things that i would do differently um that uh also uh theme park casual uh agrees with i feel like that they should kind of add sort of like how they do on main street where they they bring out for uh, like a uh, tinkerbell or or baymax or buzz lightyear they kind of add i think it'd be kind of cool that if they did something like at the very beginning or closer to the end of the finale maybe have someone like some of the characters kind of interact like with the fireworks i think that would be kind of cool um i do love the lighting package of it where they yeah. they lit them the the rock work based off of what music was playing from uh the incredible john williams score the lighting package. Wars. i was watching that stream with you know that you were in there with with theme park casual i was watching the stream when you guys were watching it and um yeah it was a cool show and the lighting package really stood out for me the the reds and the blues and it was really really cool my yeah. only my only yeah lighting package was great i would add if i had any kind of critique um i would just say maybe add like you were saying some characters in there to interact with it because there are points in the show because it's not created for this, there's right. gaps. There's music yes. playing, and there's no fireworks. Yeah, there were there were certain moments where it's a little bit cringy because you're just kind of sitting there waiting, and absolutely nothing was happening. Yeah, the music was playing, which was cool, but I mean, it was just just Awkward. all of us standing there listening to music. You know, yeah, it would have been nice if they added some extra elements to it. Absolutely, you could have had characters. You could have. Um, even maybe some projection mapping you got you have that beautiful canvas of all those rocks you know um or actually i think they're technically petrified trees the the you know in terms of batu lore but you know i digress but like you could have projection mapping on there to kind of offset the lack of pyro for those for those gaps and that would be pretty cool you know so but yeah. but here's the thing too i want and this is kind of a little bit of going off the beaten path here but i do want to mention it because it's it's i'm we recently went to Universal Studios Hollywood, right? Uh -huh. With Wizard, Ebba, his lovely wife, Wizard's friend. We had a great time, you know? And we did Wizarding World, obviously, while we were there, right? I do have to say, now I want to pick your brain on this, because it is related to, to this in, in a way. We've been very critical, and the fandom has been, been very critical of Galaxy's Edge not having a lot of life in the land with characters, alien bands, 
even music, things like that. I have to say, and look, I, this isn't justifying Disney like the Galaxy's Edge because they, like I just said earlier on the show, Disney needs to do better with Galaxy's Edge. We need those creatures, those droids, those alien bands. We need that life in the Galaxy's Edge, right? But did you notice much life in Wizarding World? I didn't really go in there. There's not a lot of music. It's a lot of sound and kind of very low, you know, and there's no characters walking around. Like you don't see, I think there was maybe a performance here or there, but it's not chalked full of a bunch of life either. I and mean, did you, did you kind of notice that or? Yeah, absolutely. And actually, believe it or not, that was one of the stipulations from JK Rowling as to why she didn't go with Disney um, to put Harry Potter into the Disney parks because of how their approach was with the franchises. They wanted to have a lot of meet and greets with the characters. And that was a big no, no for her. And why isn't, and this is the thing. And I look, we did a video recently about universal. We were very positive about universal. So, you know, I'm, I'll, I'll give praise to universal when they do good stuff, but why isn't the fandom on that? Like, why why don't we have wizards walking around why can't we meet harry potter it's all it, like seriously it's literally the same disney literally took a page out of the wizarding world playbook when it comes to this it's a very empty land with very minimal music and there's a lot of just the sound effects but no one talks about that with wizarding world so for me i'm going to try to <laughs> i'm going to try to choose my words wisely because I don't want to offend anybody. Um, I feel like in the world that J.K. Rowling created with Harry Potter, as opposed to Star Wars, it's very more because it's set in like uh, the UK and what have you, you know, in, in that it's a little bit more, even though there are thematic elements where it's like okay you have wizarding battles you know you you, you have these uh, uh these relatable characters and what have you i feel like the the type of storyline that harry is to have characters walking around would kind of be more diluting the franchise so to speak because okay. these are characters that aren't really where they interact well with one another I can't really foresee how well that they would really react to fans. Muggles. Muggles. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, basic muggles. Perfect. So you feel so if, Star if, Wars, if I were... feel like the characters could be more because you do hear the bands, you know, you do see the alien creatures, the droids, where I feel like with Harry Potter, it's a lot more pristine so to speak, when it comes to the character interactions, like with the professors and everything, it's more like a one low tone. Kind it's more of low key. It's not yeah. like out there where, okay, that's fair. Because I was wondering that because we were there and I, I didn't go on Forbidden Journey. I was outside waiting for you guys. So I had time to kind of walk around, kind of soak everything. And I've been there many times before, but I was noticing that. I'm like, I don't see really any performances. Right. And I know they do have but performances. It, it, but, but in the not... old retrospect of what you're saying is correct. I mean, if, if you're going to come down on Galaxy's Edge for not having anything, you, you can't say, okay, well, Wizarding World is like the best thing when it comes to that kind of interaction because there really isn't no interaction. No. The I only mean, kind yeah. of interaction that you would have in the sense is if you have a wand, you know, you have like certain places, you know. The, the windows, right? They yeah. interact. Yeah. And I think um, – you know, you can do the Ollivander's uh, wand shop stuff. Yeah. But again, that's kind of like Galaxy's Edge with the lightsaber thing, you know? I mean, I know it's price-wise, it's, I think, a little different, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but it's the same idea, you know? So the, the, the my concept. point overall, it's it's a very comparable experience overall. Right. Now, you know, I, I do think Butterbeer is a much stronger um, offering than, than, the, than the blue milk and the green milk, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of that, too, is just the nature of the drink. You know, I think Buttermilk... Uh, I mean, uh, butter, butter beer. beer. Yeah, <laughs> buttermilk. Buttermilk. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing we're doing a crossover here. We're in multiverse. No, but the the, the butter beer. It, it's it's. I mean, come on. You got two things. In, you know, who doesn't love butter? Who doesn't love beer? You know what I'm saying? But blue milk, right? Is like I don't know. It just it just it's off putting out the gate. You know what I'm saying? So it's a harder kind of thing to sort of sell, especially in a hot theme park. You really want to chug milk. I don't know. It's not that appetizing. 
even though it technically isn't milk, that's a whole other story. But yeah, the butterbeer thing and all that is a much better experience, much better taste offering. But um, overall, though, with the entertainment and the kinetic energy, I didn't notice much of a difference, which is very, very, very interesting. But that doesn't excuse Disney. I for, fully believe and I stand by it. We need more character stuff, creatures, alien bands, even music in that land because it yeah. is sorely, sorely missing it, you know? Absolutely. So. And then as far as like the um, the, the the nighttime, like the uh, the fireworks show in, in Galaxy's Edge, because uh, Casual actually asked me this question. He said, would you see it again? And I said, I would see it again, but it's not an experience that I would have to see every single night every time i want to see fireworks like once in a while maybe like every few times just to kind of get a different perspective a different viewpoint um different kind of storyline um than i would but it's not something that i would go completely out of my way for okay interesting interesting all right now let's dip into some of these uh some of these merch offerings real quick i wanted to show you because i know you bought merch um, mm -hmm. I don't think you bought this though, right? You didn't get this, the helmet, correct? You're correct. Um, I, I don't, I don't recall actually seeing that there. I wasn't sure if it was available at the time, uh, but yeah. I, I did get the, uh, I did get the, the job of the hut, uh, popcorn bucket that. Okay. I get. And how was that one? I, 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 it looked cool. I don't know. It was cool. Yeah. I think anything with job of the hut, I, I'm like a, I kind of geared more towards, I, I go for more of the stuff that's like the non-practical like the stuff that you would not normally see in a regular everyday theme park setting so it's like yeah. with job of the hut it was like i had to have it you had to do it yeah and now brooke uh giger mcdonald here is reporting that the salvaged stormtrooper helmet popcorn bucket will be available starting today and this was on may 4th so i think this is a may the 4th thing and um at Kot Saka's kettle at Disney's Hollywood Studios at Walt Disney World. I don't know Disneyland situation with this. I'm assuming it's probably going to drop at Disneyland on May 4th as well today. It's a cool bucket though. This is pretty actually. I don't know. This is pretty awesome actually. I like the the weathering on it. Right. Yeah. The if they did, if they did have this available at the time I was there, I definitely would have got that with Java. Because yeah. again, I I love like that out of the ordinary kind of things. Yeah, this is pretty cool. This is pretty cool. Any other merch that you saw there that kind of stood out for you or? Besides not re the, not the really. Head? Like I just got the popcorn bucket. There wasn't really anything that kind of like stood out to me that I really uh, needed or wanted. I'm the type of person where if it's like if I don't have the desire to actually have it, I won't buy it. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean that's that's good. I, I've actually as I've gotten as I've gone through my fandom, I've been a Disney fan for my whole life, but. As the years have gone on, I've gotten pickier and pickier and pickier with the stuff that I buy. You know, before, yeah. like a decade ago, for example, I'd go to Disneyland, I would just buy shirts and sweaters and hoodies. Do you, and, and do you think, actually, since you're on the subject, do you think that's more of your choice or do you think it's because of the actual merch itself? Mm. I think it's a little bit of both. You know, I mean, I think as you hit a certain age, you don't necessarily rock a bunch of like, you know, I mean, that's part of it. I think I'm just getting older. And then also a part of it is the merch is weaker. I think now than it was year, years and years ago. I mean, honestly, uh, when it comes to Disney merch, I'd much rather go to box lunch or something like that. I agree. I mean, I, mean, I, I think agree. They're, yeah, they're like a, technically like a third party vendor, I guess you'd call them. Yeah. But the stuff from there, like their button ups and things like that are way more appealing to me than a lot of the Disneyland resort merchandise that you go and everything like, is kind of generic, to be honest with you. Yeah, I, I mean, there, there's been times I've been to Disneyland, like looking to buy something like I want to buy. I want to buy something and I literally can't find something to buy because there's yeah. nothing, you know, it, it, it's crazy. So how, what's I, your experience? Though? I, I do wish that they would get back into where exclusive stuff for Disneyland and exclusive stuff for Walt Disney World and not have this merging of Disney parks all the time. Like, I don't mind think, a little you, I don't mind a little bit of that. But right. like it's like with everything, and you could thank Jay Rizzullo for that. I mean, n n look, not to say the current regime or management team doesn't continue that; they absolutely have. But Jay Rizzullo was real big on that with this one Disney initiative, and we talked about it with the whole Pelts thing, where everything was homogenized into like just Disney parks. You know, I want to see that too. I want to see more park specific stuff. I want to go to DCA and get a DCA specific thing. Not to say that stuff doesn't exist, but it's far, it's too far and few between. We need more of that. 
I want I want park specific stuff, you know. But the yeah. Disney parks thing, the branding is is a is a money saver for Disney because hey, look, if you sell a Disney park shirt here in California and you have extra that you need to get rid of, you know, you can ship it to Florida and it, and it works. Or if you have an Animal Kingdom shirt or a DCA shirt. Well, who's going to buy a California Adventure shirt over in Epcot? You know, so that's the problem. You can't ship it around the world and resell it. Disney parks, you can't. So from a business perspective, it's smart. You know, just like a lot of the stuff that JPEG did was very smart from a business perspective. But from a fan perspective and from a quality perspective, I think it's a lesser thing, you know? So, I agree. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. But any closing thoughts before we go, uh, George, on your, uh, on your adventures over at Star Wars Night? Overall, it was a very nice experience. It was very different. I like to try to do stuff different to kind of shake my uh, vacations up a bit that I'm not just doing the same thing. Uh, I There are some things that I do agree with um, uh, people, like with the, the critiques and, and what have you. But there are also things where it's like, you know, it didn't really bother me that much. But overall, I had a great a great time, a great experience. I think with everything considered, I'd probably rate it probably seven out of 10. Okay. That's decent. So maybe with some twerking, some tweaking, <laughs> twerking, twerking, some tweaking, not twerking, Tweak. tweaking. No, no this, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this isn't she Hulk, right? We're, yeah. we're not twerking yeah. here. We're not twerking here. No, t with some tweaking, um, maybe they can get you up to eight or nine, you know, yeah. we'll see, but this isn't the first time they've done star Wars night. So I don't know. I mean, it, it seems like they have some work to do, but overall, a pretty cool event. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. But, uh, George, the Italiano, it's good to have you back, brother. It really is good to have you back. Um, if you can let everybody home know where they can find you on social media, sir. Absolutely. And thank you so much. It's gl I'm glad to be back and uh, definitely uh, keep out for many more OG55 videos on the horizon because we got a lot stacked up for you folks. So definitely yeah. make sure you uh, like, subscribe, and uh, smash that notification <sighs> bell. Absolutely. And uh, OG55 wants to say uh, goodbye to y'all too. Hey, 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 watch your mouth, young man. Watch your mouth. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but anyway, if you'd like to find me, you can mm -hmm. find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Disney George. You could also find me on Instagram under the Disney Italiano. And of course, you can find me here on my home base at Orange Grove 55 with Citrus Corner with all that sweet, juicy, but sometimes sticky Disney news and info. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Chewy says bye to everybody. Thank you so much for watching this special uh, May the 4th episode of OG 55. We broke down Star Wars night. We talked a little bit about Galaxy's Edge, even dipped in a little bit of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Comment down below with all your thoughts. We would love, love to hear from you. Thank you all so, so much for watching. And as always, may the force be with you. <laughs>